today I am watching Catalyst Reads. Yep. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Chronicles Volume 1 by Bob Dylan. So, this is essentially Bob Dylan's autobiography. Don't get excited that it's called Part 1, Volume 1, because there is no Volume 2, it's just this. And I picked this up for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon, so as a result of that I actually listened to the audiobook this time round. And um, I'm going to be talking today about just a few of the little notes that I made while we were going through it. I'm also going to give it a rating at the end. So, yeah, let me read. I was going to say let me read the... Mm. Does it have a blurb? I don't think it has a blurb. What I'm going to do instead of reading the blurb is I'm going to read you the first few lines of it to give you a feel for Dylan's writing style. So... Lou Levy, top man of Leeds Music Publishing Company, took me up in a taxi to the Pythian Temple on West 70th Street to show me the pocket-sized recording studio where Bill Haley and his Comets had recorded Rock Around the Clock. Then down to Jack Dempsey's restaurant on 58th and Broadway, where we sat down in a red leather upholstered booth facing the front window. Lou introduced me to Jack Dempsey, the great boxer. Jack shook his fist at me. You look too light for a heavyweight kid, you'll have to put on a few pounds. You're going to have to dress a little finer, look a little sharper. Not that you'll need much in the way of clothes when you're in the ring. Don't be afraid of hitting somebody too hard. He's not a boxer, Jack. He's a songwriter and will be publishing his songs. Oh, yeah, well, I hope to hear him some of these days. Good luck to you, kid. And that's how we get introduced to a young Bob Dylan. And it does cover a fair, fair, fair old chunk of his life. Let me check when this was published. So this was published in 2004, and I would say it does go up pretty much to then. I mean, a lot of it, because it is very, it is a memoir as opposed to an autobiography, so it's not necessarily linear. It's more like you're sort of listening to, to Dylan talking to, I guess, especially when you have the audiobook as well. All right, so a few of the things that I enjoyed about this. Well, I really enjoyed getting to know more about his past, especially before, you know, before he became well-known as a singer and songwriter, because he was spending a lot of his time you know, even as a young man, like, you know, he was younger than I am now by the time that he actually kind of went into the public eye. But we do learn in this, for example, uh, the record guy asked him if he's worked anywhere before and he says, uh, dro uh, drove a bakery truck and he also worked in construction. So that's where he got up to before then. He also told them that he got to where he was by riding a freight train, but he actually drove there in a sedan and he spent about 24 hours just dozing in the back seat of this car. What's cool is that there are a lot of mentions for old school musicians, Dave Van Ronk in particular. Van Ronk is just like, every two two pages it's like, okay, then Van Ronk did this and Van Ronk did that. And we had some, yeah we did have somebody trying to kind of put on a Dylan voice I think for the, for the audiobook. It would have been really interesting to have had an audiobook of this actually read by Bob Dylan. But you know, you take what you get. At one point he went to a pub where John Wilkes Booth used to drink and he thought he saw his ghost. We had some great lines as well, so um, he was talking about a woman he knew, and he said, uh, According to her, Dracula ruled the world, and he was the son of Gutenberg, who invented the printing press. Hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> I might keep on trying to do my, my Bob Dylan accent. Yeah, here we go. I'll show you what the guy sounded like. Especially out of town. And she began trying to help me out. She was just as outspoken and opinionated as Dave was. Just, I'm, I swear to God, he's talking about Dave Van Ronk then. <laughs> and I just skipped into a random bit. <laughs> what did annoy me though, actually, with with the narrator, he couldn't pronounce Don Juan. He called him Don Juan, which I'm pretty sure is not. I'm pretty sure it's Don Juan, but I don't know. When Dylan was born, he was born uh, he, a quite an interesting point in history, really. He was born during the Second World War, but before the U.S. had actually actively entered it. So, it's a strange time to be born. He said, uh, During his youth, they were taught to hide from Russian bombs and that they could parachute over their town at any time. So there was this kind of fear of the Russians, even though he points out that his uncle had fought alongside the Russians just a few years earlier as well. He was, when he was a kid, he used to read a lot of poetry, so he name-dropped Byron, Shelley and Poe. He memorised the bells by Poe. And he used to pick up books, flip to the middle of them at random, and just read a few pages. And if he liked it, he would read the whole thing. If not, he'd go and pick up another book, which is an interesting way of discovery. 
He did say he liked the Russian authors. He also liked uh, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, and Edgar Rice Burroughs. But he also talked as well about his love for folk singing. And what he said is, uh, folk singers can tell tales like a whole book, but in just a few verses. <laughs> oh dear. We actually had to uh, change as well. We had to change the version we were listening to because we tried to listen to a version of this on uh, YouTube and basically the first disc was all there and then it just kept randomly repeating parts of the first disc as opposed to continuing. So we had to change narrator. He said, here we go, accent time again. He said, it's a crazy mixed up world and you have to look it right in the eye. <laughs> I, don't know, <laughs> I don't even know, was that American? <laughs> Whatever. He also, actually what was really cool is he met a uh, dude who, who did the sound effects for radio shows. So this guy told him that the sound of the electric chair and all of these, you know, dramatic broadcasts was actually just bacon sizzling in a pan. He said, uh, he said something which I think is still applicable. And he said, uh, semantics and labels can drive you crazy. In terms of his name, he was going to be Robert Allen, but somebody had already taken his name because his name is Robert Allen Zimmerman. And, um, but he was reading Dylan Thomas, so that's where he come up with Bob Dylan. He's just, he was like, I could be Bob Allen or Barbie Allen. But then he was complaining that like, well, there was already like Bobby V and, you know, there were lots of Bobbies. Bobby Davro, I think that's a name of somebody, maybe a musician, I don't know. He talked about as well some of his early influences. So for example, Hank Williams, and, he, and uh, when he found out that Hank Williams was dead, he said, uh, the silence of space had never seemed so loud. He was talking about this time when he uh, he went on a tour with the Grateful Dead and he was actually having kind of a bad time as well. And um, they wanted to play some of his like older backlist songs and he couldn't remember the lyrics, he couldn't remember the chords. He said some of them had only actually been sung one time really when he recorded them. And uh, he was starting to worry that he was over the hill and I, I kind of thought that's like laughable to think of that now because this was still in like, I don't know, 1982 and I think Bob, Bob Dylan still still relevant today as, as much as he ever has been. He said, he was talking about the process of writing songs and he said, uh, he, sa he said, a song is like a dream and you have to make it come true. <laughs> what was that? Uh, we'll just leave it in. We'll leave it in. And he talked about Bono as well. And he said, because he was hanging out with Bono from U2 and, and I don't like U2 and I don't like Bono really either. But he said that spent, he said, uh, Spending time with Bono is like eating dinner on a train. Feels like you're moving, going somewhere. Oh yeah, that's right. He went over to Bono's for no. I, I can't. I can't actually decipher my notes. Either Dylan went to Bono's house or Bono went to Dylan's house. But either way, whoever won, went. They just took a bunch of Guinness with them and they sat there drinking Guinness and talking about Kerouac, which sounds like a pretty cool evening. He he said. New York was a city where you could freeze to death in the middle of the street and no one even noticed. And he started, he was talking about uh, Ice-T and N.W.A. as well, because he had a friend who got him into hip-hop and he was like, they were all poets and knew what was going on. Which I think is cool, because I kind of think of rappers as poets as well. Specifically, I think more, you know, underground rappers as opposed to mainstream rappers. People, basically anyone who doesn't just doesn't doesn't just rap about guns and bitches you know you can you can have rap that's real poetry he also talked about woody guthrie's book called bound for glory which i have somewhere up there it's on my tbr shelves i don't know when i'm going to get to it it's a bit big but he may he talked about it in a way in a way that made me want to read it so that was cool and um the last thing i wanted to mention as well is that when he was first starting out he used to use a bent coat hanger rack as a harmonica holder and he said, he said it only sort of worked. <laughs> but I suppose you have to use what you can get. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. I actually noticed on my book blog that when I first read this the first time, I, I only gave it a four out of five. And listening back to it on the audiobook, I loved it. I'm gonna give it a five out of five for this reread, I think. I just couldn't fault it. I could have listened to it go on forever. And I hope he does at some point actually release Chronicles volume two. And um, my girlfriend even enjoyed it as well. She was listening to it with me too. And, um, you know, to the point where I'd have to pause it, you know, if she was nipping to the toilet or something so she didn't miss anything. So, so that's always good. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments whether you've read this book and if not, whether you'd like to. Let me know what your favourite Bob Dylan song is 
as well. There we go. We have a little discussion question thrown in there. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more Buckish videos. And I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.